Welcome into Roll Sports. I am here with Jet Central. He's live. You got me, Central? Yep. Yeah, I can hear you, man. All right. All righty. We're here with Jet Central. We're going to record this also on a podcast. This is Rover Sports. This is all of our different channels. And uh, and JC, man, I haven't spoken to you in a little while. Uh, you got the Brashad Perriman news out on your channel. I mean, how are you feeling about Perriman? Um, so far, so good. I mean, he... I don't think he's Robbie Anderson, uh, the guy that we obviously lost, but um, a nice consolation prize. I think that Perriman could just be unlocked. I mean, his speed, his size, I mean, what he was able to do with Jameis towards the end of his, uh, towards the end of his tenure, I was surprised he didn't make it in Baltimore. Maybe they just didn't give him the opportunities that Arians gave him. And I just really hope he could stay healthy, stay on the field, and... I, I re- I mean, you did pay him, what, $8 million? So it was a pretty good contract, though, for Perriman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he was with Cleveland, too, and he, that's another place where he didn't work out. Yeah, he ha- he would, he's like that third receiver who always has, like, yeah. that, you know, that big play. But me and Central are here. Uh, me and Central are really here. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking down each team, one team, pretty much during one week. And we have, till the NFL draft, we probably have like, what, six weeks maybe till that draft? Mm -hmm. So what we're doing here, we're talking everything Cincinnati Bengals football. And you've been an admirer of Zach Taylor. Uh, You even went to Bengals games last year. Even diehard Bengals fans haven't been to Bengals games, but you you went out to a game and and just talk about the broad overview of the of this Bengals franchise right now. Yeah, I mean you're right. I did I did go to a Bengals game and uh, it was fun, you know for sure. And I think right now for Cincinnati, like the culture is a little bit different because it's the first time in a long, long, long time where they've have a you know they have a new head coach in, in Zach Taylor. It's no more Marvin Lewis. Marvin Lewis, you know, he kind of re- he did a lot of things with the front office, drafting players. He had a lot of say, um, you know, on who they brought in and just the overall cult- culture of the team. And Marvin was like the type of guy to take chances on players, guys like um, Vontez Perfect, right? He gives a lot of second chances out. Where Zach Taylor, it's kind of like no BS, no nonsense. Either you fit the system, you fit the mold, or you don't. Um, and and we saw that last season with Joe Mixon a little bit too, where it's you know, Mixon isn't really, he didn't really fit into the, like, it took him a long time to kind of get accustomed to what Zach Taylor wanted to do on offense, and they didn't really run the ball for the first, you know, for the first 75% of the season, and then Mixon started to get rolling towards the end, so I'm excited to see what Zach Taylor and this Bengals team does moving forward. I like some of their free agency signings. I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, what are your, what are your, some of your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, free agency, I mean, Alexander to me is like similar to a pyramid. Because this is a guy out of Clemson. He was taken in the second round. And he went to a corner-heavy team. And I know that Trey Waynes was always the guy there. And Xavier Rhodes used to be elite. This guy's never really gotten his opportunity to, to start on the outside. And, I mean, he has played a little bit. But I don't know if it's about the guy's speed or what it is. But I want to see him emerge as a top-flight cornerback on this team. Yeah. and it's, it, it, Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you were going to comment about Alexander before I go to another guy. Yeah, no, and it's funny that you brought up Waynes because now Waynes is, is is in Cincinnati as well. You know what I mean? It's funny. <laughs> and it, it's not like they have, like, the Bengals. It's not like they have th- – they didn't hire the D.C. Of the, uh, of the Vikings, did they? George Edwards? I don't think so, no. I still think it's this Lou Anarumu guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Lou is kind of almost faceless. Um, I don't. I, I guess he likes to bring pressure. That defense was just kind of a mess last year. I mean, tell me about Lou. What the heck is this guy? I mean, the the thing is, with Cincinnati, they have some really nice players on defense. Uh, Carl Lawson, Jesse Bates. Um, I still think Kirkpatrick's a good player. Um, and even guys like uh, H- Sam Hubbard, too. I think he's yeah. like an ascending player as well. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, at first, I, I was really thinking for this Bengals team, Chase Young should be the pick because I'm not so, like, I'm not over the moon in love with with Joe Burrow. I mean, I, I would honestly take Tua over Joe Burrow, and mm-hmm. I would even love a trade down scenario with, you know, maybe the Miami Dolphins where you can trade back to five, get Herbert, right? This is the, this is the guy who 
you know, was coached by Zach Taylor at the Senior Bowl, won Senior Bowl MVP, and did really, really, really uh, well for that team. So uh, I'm not as sold as Burrow are on Burrow as much as you are. I know you really you're you're, you're bought in to Joe. And, I uh, got bought in, but I, I haven't been the biggest Joe fan. I mean, you you and I have talked like I haven't I haven't been like on Joe Burrow since day one. Like a couple of months ago, I was kind of like, you know, this is a one season thing. But then when I see like his footwork, I watch the film like I'm just so impressed. And I like his personality more more than a Justin Herbert. And and trust me, I really like P- Herbert's personality. It's just that Burrow, I think will thrive and succeed. And and he's kind of like a very responsible kid. You know, he's a very responsible guy. And just having him as a leader, he just hates to lose. He has that attitude that I just think could be awesome for a team like Cincy. That needs, they need Joe Burrow. Yeah, and, and they have talent on offense. You know, Tyler Boyd, they're bringing A.J. Green back. We talked about Joe Mixon already. Yeah. Uh, Jonah Williams is another guy coming back from injury. Missed the entire rookie season. Um Plus, you know, you have an entire draft, too. I mean, who's to say they got the first pick in the second round? They got a third round pick, right? So this Bengals team is going to have opportunities to, to get better. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we're going to kind of workshop this central. Uh, I, I look at Cincinnati, and I think that this team, with some really good leadership from Zach Taylor, with a quarterback that can produce, they can be unlocked. Like, dang near an eight or nine win team. And I look at Trey Waynes, and Trey Waynes is, is a big deal, like on defense, because he's kind of getting older and slower. Um, the, the thing is, like, I don't know about Carlos Dunlap, so I, I do think they need that edge presence. You have Sam Hubbard. The thing is, Central, is that these linebackers are a real weak point. You have Jermaine Pratt and Jordan Evans as the linebackers here. I think that they need an established linebacker on defense, but they're kind of close to being a good defense. Right. And, and you know, it kind of makes you wonder if a guy like Patrick Queen falls or Zach Bond falls to, to round two, they got the first pick in the second round. And I know they need offensive line help. Yeah. Uh, but I'm looking at the linebacking core. I think Zach Bond makes a lot of sense. And I also think Patrick Queen and, you know, obviously Queen is more inside and Bond's more outside, obviously. But I think either of those two guys would be a slam dunk. For the first pick in the second How round. How about Murray? Um, I don't think he's going to be there. Okay. Epinesa? I, I, I like Murray better than all those guys. Though. I just don't think he's going to be there. How about Epinesa? I do like Epinesa. I just don't know as far as like how much... I just feel like with, with Carl Lawson already there, with Sam Hubbard already there, I don't see Epinesa coming in and starting over one of those guys. Okay, so let's rank the second round because first round, it's probably going to be Burrow at the quarterback mm-hmm. position. And we could continue to talk about Burrow and how he fits. I, looking at the tackle problems, I think a tackle problem is much more pressing because I actually really like this player a lot. I still am holding out hope for John Ross. He's like one of those guys that I just can't, I can't. I can't leave. You know, I can't quit on him. I just love the speed. I love his intelligence. Um, and he's been hurt. And I just think he's a guy like Perriman. He just needs opportunities. I want to see him on the field. And if he fails, he fails. But I want Ross to be a focal point of this next season. Yeah, we need some sort of clarity on on John Ross. I mean, because if you're looking at the Bengals wide receiving court, AJ Green's going to come back, and I know he's coming off the injury and whatnot, but I still think he's going to be one of the better receivers in the league. I, I don't think this guy's going to just fall off a cliff. Yeah. Tyler Boyd's one of my favorite players in the in the entire league, you know. So yes, it's not like this Bengals team is just completely. It, it, they're not the Miami Dolphins of last year, you know, where they just have absolutely nobody. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Demarcus Lodge, you watched Tiamu and you watched Ole Miss with Jay Patterson. That guy can make plays. Mm-hmm. He's on their team. Alden Tate on their team. Florida so, State, yeah. Yeah, Florida State. So I think that there is talent. Um, now, it's gonna, I'll tell you a couple of interesting positions looking at this roster. The tight end position is absolutely just barren. I mean, there's no one there at the tight end <laughs> yeah. position. 
Um, and then backup running back. I mean, Gio's been there a while. He's loved by Bengals fans, but he's an older back now. But the thing that's interesting is that they're probably not going to go running back because they do have Travion and Rodney Anderson. Rodney Anderson in the sixth round, that's a guy I could see being like a Gus Edwards. I could see Anderson getting carries this year. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking Cincinnati, they, they, may, they might be one of those teams that targets like a Cam Akers in round three or four and maybe tries to go tight end with like a Cole Komet, a Harrison Bryant in round two, um, mm. or like a Lucas Niang and try to ta- target like the other tackle position because Cordy Glenn's not going to, you know, he's not going to be back. So mm. now you have another hole to fill in the offensive line. Um, I, I think they're they're okay at corner. I mean, when you look at the defensive numbers last season, again, like in the secondary, like every single team threw on them, every single team. Um, and there was a lot of question marks with the defensive coordinator and whatnot, but I feel like, you know, they just didn't have the players. And it's, it's kind of weird to say because I feel like, you know, a lot of these guys were, were high-round picks, right? Like Jesse Bates, second-round pick out of Wake Forest. Got guys like uh, William Jackson III, who I just – I don't even know what's going on with him. Like, he kind of was just drafted out of Houston. And, like, <laughs> you know, when he plays, he, like, plays well. And then, like, some, some games you just don't even know if he's there. And then uh, Drake Kirkpatrick's, like, a good player. But I just feel like he needs to kind of step up a little bit too. Yeah, but they're getting, getting older. Yeah, but they're getting guys in the building. You know, DJ Reader was another one of their signings. And then Von Bell, I don't know if you saw. He signed the three-year contract. Um, too. So is that today? Uh, it was, I think it was, uh, early yesterday morning. Ah, so let me see the, this, the intro. Yeah. Because this was updated yesterday. You have Von Bell who, so it's, so you have Sean Williams there, but it's going to be Bell and Bates, right? In, in yeah. the secondary. And Bates is a good player. I mean, you've been a guy that's been a Jesse Bates fan for, for such a long time. And this defense, I mean, yeah, it, it could really have pop. I, I think that the defense is actually really close. For some reason, they weren't close last year, but maybe that's just a team kind of quitting on Taylor or just kind of quitting on the season, I meant to say. Uh, yeah, you know? they, they would you know, have a lot of three and outs, too of like the offense just not being able to move or get one first down and then punt, you know, they're on the field all the time. They're playing yeah. against like high power teams like Cleveland and Baltimore and Pittsburgh um, who all had solid seasons last year. I mean, like Cleveland disappointed, but they're, they were still were a solid team, you know? Yeah. It's complimentary football. And when you had Ryan Finley, who was just unable to move the ball. You're, mm-hmm. you're going to have those issues. I mean, this team, no team is really immune of problems. But the um, the center position isn't a good position, you know, Trey Hopkins and then Zaya Fulu. So you have Billy Price. I remember Billy Price He's a high end pick. He was hurt before the draft. Mm-hmm. He's got to be good at this guard position. You, you got to bank on him being solid with Jonah Williams. And then you maybe get one other piece in the draft um, to, to kind of solidify you a little bit on that offensive line. Yeah. Like, like Cushenberry at LSU. Maybe. Yes. Yes. Cushenberry. How about like Edwards, Alaire and Cushenberry for Joe Burrow? Because like, I think that Joe Burrow can really succeed next year. I, yeah. Plus like if you get a center with the first pick and I, I just don't know if that picks a little too high for him, you know, third, third round, third, or third maybe, like a, maybe like a, maybe um, like a Cesar uh, Ruiz out of Michigan at center. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, you go ahead. I, I'm talking. No, I was just gonna, yeah, I was just going to say that I, I feel like if you're thinking center, you, you got to be thinking Cushenberry if you're Cincinnati picking Joe Burrow. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And um, that would be a perfect fit with Edwards Alaire. I mean, have you watched Joe Burrow? Let's get the unfiltered now. We, we're at 14 minutes of the show. Let's get your unfiltered opinion on Joe Burrow and like how his career is going to turn out. Let, let's just hear everything you have to say about the guy. All right. My take on Joe Burrow is this. I think he's an accurate quarterback and I think he gets the ball out quickly. Um, really nice mechanics, works really good in the pocket, showed some mobility, which I didn't really think he had down the stretch of last season, right? Especially against Clemson. And I think he has like, a lot of tools to be successful, but I don't like my, per- 
uh, my pro comparison for him is like a Jimmy G, like like a guy who has a quick quick release and he's good in the pocket, but that's pretty much it. I don't think he's going to ever lead the team. I don't really think he's ever going to be the reason why a team wins. I just feel like he has to be the point guard, um, and he needs a ton of talent around him. Um, he, you know, I, I don't want to bash him for not starting at Ohio State because that place just you know per, always. You know, it's just five star after five star after five star. So it is what it is. But he doesn't start there. He comes to LSU and has like a rocky first season there. I mean, low completion percentage and all that stuff. And yeah, like you can get better and stuff. But I would much rather, you know, try to trade for a guy like a Josh Rosen who is younger than Joe Burrow. Sam Darnold's younger than Joe Burrow. Josh Allen's younger than than Burrow. I don't. I don't get this notion where it's like, oh, Haskins is a bust and has no future. Daniel Jones is a turnover prone quarterback and, you know, he's going to have a rocky NFL career when Joe Burrow is still in college yet he's older than all these guys. And, you know, the first season of LSU, I, don't, I, I feel like you just can't look at that tape and you can't just throw it in the, in the garbage can. Like you have to, like it's the same player. You know what I mean? And... I just look at Burrow, and I feel like if you just put him in Cincinnati, a team with not a good defense, with a horrible offensive line, with a young head coach who's still kind of learning the ropes, um, I don't know if that's instant success, especially in that division, with great teams and great coaches like Tomlin and, and Harbaugh. So I think if I'm Cincinnati, I would try to trade down and go after Justin Herbert, a bigger dude who could push the ball in the cold. Um, a dude who's going to come in and you don't have to worry about him maybe throwing a team under the bus or uh, voicing his opinion too, too much to the media. If they, you know, if, if the Bengals go on a 10 game losing streak or they're three and 13 or three and 14, whatever, you know, with the new CBA, is Joe Burrow going to call out the coaching staff? Is he going to become uh, like a distraction? Mm. And with Justin Herbo, uh, with Herbert and Tua, I don't think you're going to have those problems. And I also think that um, Herbert has been more consistent over the three years. I feel like he pretty much checks every box over Burrow as far as, you know, arm strength, height, weight, mobility. Uh, I mean, they really, when it comes down to mechanics, both quarterbacks have really solid mechanics. So I think Burrow's is a little bit better, but it's not like Herbert struggles or has like this crazy loopy release that's going to be an issue. Yeah. Uh, so I just feel like the drop off isn't that much. And you could trade back to five and get a huge haul by the Miami Dolphins, who, you know, they love Joe. So that's kind of my overall take. I think that I'm now going to argue for, for Burrow now, okay, mm -hmm. since – um, and, and I looked at Burrow, and you the, 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 the best – like like one of your best points there, and I really like the argument, even though I disagree with parts of the argument, uh, because I, I think Burrow here is the right choice because the guy just had the greatest college football season from a quarterback. And, you know, I, I wanted to, to keep just saying that this is a one-year thing, this is a one-year thing, but I love the touch that he throws the football with, the accuracy, the quick decision-making, and the guy is still 6'4", and he's very durable in the pocket. And I still think, you look at the NFL, even Kyler and Daniel Jones, they don't have the biggest arms, but they're still making plays. And Joe Burrow's anticipation, I think, is so much better than Justin Herbert's. And also, I didn't like last year with Justin Herbert when he was playing against Auburn and Bo Nix, and he could have won that game. And he didn't have like that put-it-away kind of quality. Now, he did stay there. There was coaching changes. So he's dealt with dysfunction. But I, the first year... With Joe Burrow, the reason he didn't do well is because he didn't play for like three years and he didn't get the timing with the receivers down. So I think that that this next year he finally got the timing down. He he's he's unfazed by the big moments. If you watch him at Texas, you watch him against Auburn, against Florida, he plays the best. He has the chip on his shoulder. He gets angry, has revenge. Uh, his preparation skills are also next level. Coach's son. I just think his ability to dissect the defenses. I look at Tua, and I love Tua as well. I, Tua's injury history is just is just so damn concerning with the hip. With uh, every single year, he's kind of getting hurt, and now he's going to be playing against bigger guys. And Joe is just Joe is Joe is Ohio. Joe is from there. He is Ohio. Um, it's kind of like Josh Allen in Buffalo, where like Rosen wouldn't be a great fit, but Josh Allen is a, is a perfect fit. 
I just think Joe Burrow in Ohio is really what the, the Bengals fans, and, and I think he fits a culture there. So I'm completely fine with it because of how accurate he's been. I think he deserves it because of the season. It was kind of like a Cam Newton-like season, and I think he deserves that right, and I actually think it's the right decision. I think this guy's going to be a very, very good quarterback at the level, at the next level. Yeah, you make a ton of good points, and that's something I didn't bring up, which was his uh, you know, anticipation skills to kind of lead wide receivers, throw them open, as opposed to you know waiting for them to get open and then throwing the football. But one thing to kind of combat, you know, what you said was, I don't know if the, I guess kind of shifting to, to Tua, he reminds me a lot of like a Deshaun Watson, not of like play styles or anything like that, but kind of how they've been in the media. They've been in like the, the limelight for so long that every, they've just been nitpicked, nitpicked at every turn. And Watson was a guy who's, you know, he's had injuries in the NFL. He's had injuries in college. And that was kind of a concern. And I feel like with just one season, just one amazing season by Joe Burrow, like I feel like teams don't draft players on what they've done. They've, they draft players on what they can do. And when I look at Joe Burrow, I don't feel confident enough in him to, to come to a horrible team and then to lead them out. I just kind of think that if you put Joe Burrow on a decent team or on a, an above average team, like Joe, Joe Burrow in Dallas would be amazing. Cause you can, you know, hand the, hand the ball to Zeke, get it to Amari Cooper has all day to throw. Yeah. But Joe also at LSU, they've never had a quarterback like Joe. So it's not like they've had this, this track record of amazing offense. One point that we didn't bring up too is Joe Brady. <laughs> yeah. How, how much, how much of a role do you think he had in Burrow's turnaround? I think he definitely had a huge role, and a lot of those guys were, were like, schemed open. Um, I, I, a great comparison for you, if you're arguing against Burrow, is he could be, like, Matt Leinart, where Leinart was so – he was fantastic at USC, you know, incredible. And then in the, and then in the NFL, he didn't really translate. I, I hope that Burrow's height will, will get him through the, the NFL because he's, like, a 6'4 guy, and – He's going to be tough in the pocket. He's accurate over the middle. That's what I like about Burrow is he's even accurate on check downs. And he doesn't have the deep ball of Justin Herbert or, or, the, or those same abilities. But, yeah, the, the point you make about Tua, what you were really going to say is that Tua, yeah, is that people are looking for a reason to not like Tua Tungo-Vailoa. You're exactly yeah. right. How about Trevor Lawrence last year against North Carolina, right? They're like, Trevor Lawrence, mm -hmm. right? You're exactly right. They were nitpicking him. Yeah, it's not like these people want to to fail or anything like that. I just feel like because he's in the spotlight forever, like it's just like how – and that's the thing with Lawrence. He's lost one game. He's had one bad game in his entire two seasons playing it with Clemson. And now people are saying like, oh, I don't know if he's going to be the number one pick because like he gave us so – like his expectations were so high because he was so good so early – I feel like the same thing with Tua. I mean, his first, you know, like everybody remembers his true freshman year, like the pass to, um, who was it? The pass to, in the end zone, a win. Yeah, Devontae Smith. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember talking to you on the phone after that game, and you're like, two is going one. Two is going one. As soon as he's ready, he's going one. Um, so it's been, you know, since then, it's like, he, there's you can't go up with him. Like, you, there, the only place that Tua can go is down. He can only fall. And the injuries are one thing, and you have to, be uh you know you have to take that into consideration you can't just like say oh he's not gonna get hurt because he is a shorter guy he has had major major injury problems and whatnot but i just feel like so many quarterbacks these days have like injury concerns or have dealt with an injury and houston is fine you know with deshaun watson and it, they just remind me a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of each other i think that Maybe I've been suckered in by the media too much, but like say to Tua really embrace Cincinnati. Um, I think it would be neck and neck if I was making the decision, but I don't think that Joe Burrow is going to fail in any way. I think he's going to be massively successful. I think both guys are going to be incredible quarterbacks. I really do. I love the class of Herbert, of Burrow, and of Tua. Uh, I just think Burrow being from there, kind of playing in the pro-style system, um... And also, Tua kind of doesn't want to go to Cincinnati from, like, what we're hearing, JC. 
And I mean, if Tua wanted to go there, it, it would be a heck of a discussion. I think, I think it's very, very close, but I, I would stay at one and take a quarterback. If you took Tua over Burrow, I'd be fine, but I'm not, I'm not anti Burrow. Like you are, I've, I've come around and, and think that he's going to be a very solid pro think that he's going to be clutch late in games. I like that. He's going to a crappy place because, you know, even Joe Burrow, we going back to Athens, Ohio in high school. He didn't have the best team. He's a three-star guy. He always have the arm strength knocks against him. He's going to have, he always has this chip on his shoulder. And I think that that's tremendous for Cincinnati. So let me ask you this. You're you're the general manager of the Bengals right now. You have to make this decision. You're on the clock at one, and you take Joe Burrow, or you trade down with the Miami Dolphins to spot number five, and you get Justin Herbert, you get pick 18 in the first round, and then you get a third-round pick as well. Which would you do? <laughs> because remember, we, we got to fill the tackle spot. we got to fill the linebackers. I think we're okay with the secondary for now. So, yeah, but here's, okay. Here's the thing also. Justin Herbert, the first year now that you've made this trade, you are immediately, if Herbert has a struggling year, the media wants Herbert to suck. They're going to want you to suck. You're going to get killed by this, by all the draft experts, okay? Everybody's going to kill you. They also don't like Herbert. They think that he played at Oregon. He's quiet. He hasn't won these big games, um, and Justin, yeah, I, I'm, I worry a tiny bit about his accuracy, like how dominant he can be. I think that Burrow actually is better, um, th- than Herbert. I am going to say that. Um, so unfortunately I don't think I'm doing it. I think I'm staying at one and, it, and maybe it's just sca- I think it is maybe fear of, of the unknown of leaving, but I'm all right with Joe Burrow to build my team around Burrow. I really am. I think he'd be a great guy to work with. Like, I love everything about the guy. But you would probably go route two, correct? Yeah, I would. But, you know, one thing one thing that I'm not mentioning, um, which is, like, foolish not mention, but, you know, if, if the Bengals go and they take Tua or they take Herbert at one or they take Chase Young or they trade down, whatever, they just do, they do anything except for take Burrow, they're going to get destroyed by fans, people on Twitter, national media, everybody's going to rip them apart from draft day until week one. Um, and I feel like another thing Cincinnati also has to do is get a backup quarterback in the building uh, or a veteran quarterback in the building because, I mean, at this point, you're it's pretty much Joe Burrow, Herbert, or Tua versus Ryan Finley. Right. So one of those guys are, you know, do you feel comfortable starting Burrow week one? Yeah, I, I, without a doubt. And you, you mentioned the guy's age. I mean, he's old by this <laughs> standard. I'm, I'm completely fine with it. Uh, it's funny, like I watched the video with JT O'Sullivan. It, it convinced me just that Burrow was very accurate and tough. And I, I was on the Herbert and Tua camp. Um, I still view Tua and Burrow. It's so tough. They're like 1A and 1B. I really love all the guys in this class, the top three guys. Um, but I w- Chase Daniel would have been the preferable. He would have been a great option. You need a backup that's smart, that knows the NFL. You need a veteran, a guy who can teach you, a Hasselback. I what whatever court like a, a Matt Moore would have been perfect for Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't understand that at all by the Bengals right here. Yeah, they they need to go out there and they need to get a, a guy who who's been around get like a, like a McCown or Fitzpatrick, you know, like, yeah, I think Miami's, a, yeah, I think Miami's a, you know, a, a great destination for whoever they pick, right. Whatever young quarterback they decide to pick, whether it's first round, second round, whatever, um, you know, we're all speculating. It's probably going to be Tua, but they have Fitzpatrick in the building. He's going to show that young quarterback the ropes and he doesn't have to play immediately. You know what I mean? But Fitzy also has the curse. Mm hmm. Everyone mm-hmm. gets hurt, <laughs> and he's yeah. always the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let me ask you this. Okay, out of the top five quarterbacks that everybody's kind of, you know, well, I guess the first question is, who are your top five quarterbacks coming out? Okay, I love this. I, I appreciate the questions, too. It's rare. I'm usually hosting, so I, I, love, I love getting these questions. Yeah, I got to rank them. I got to rank them, and it's not Cincinnati. I'm going to take Tua number one. And, and Tua's been my guy from the, from the very beginning, you know, since high mm-hmm. school in Alabama. 
And then I'm taking Joe Burrow number two. Joe Burrow surpassed Herbert to me. But then Justin's going to be three. Number four on this list, that's when it gets very, very interesting. It, it's it's between Eason or Love at number four. It's actually gotten a little bit closer from watching just Love's talent. Um, Love is kind of like a Mahomes JC where if everything clicks, the guy, both of those guys, if something clicks, you're going to be idiotic not to take them. Like if <laughs> Love somehow works out, holy crap, this, <laughs> this could be incredible. Um, I am going to actually go with Jacob Eason. A little bit of a proven guy. He has the NFL kind of background with the family, uh, with his uncle being there. He's been in the spotlight for a very long time. I think he could have that motivation and chip on the shoulder. Then number five. I think that then it is pretty much Love and then Morgan. Um, but I think Love should be like a round, late round two quarterback. I think Love is going to be late round two. Jacob Eason, I believe, also going to be firmly in round two. Both of those guys are going to be round two. And they're both going to need scenarios to kind of work out. And James Morgan's that guy late that I absolutely love, a great value on late. So th- that's where I stand on my list. I want to hear your list. Right. No, it's 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 actually funny. Mine's the same exact way. The only difference, I would probably have Herbert and Burrow kind of battling for the number two spot. Um, I think if you need to win a game today, Burrow's the guy. But I feel like long term, Herbert might be. He would be my preferred choice. Like if I'm a team drafting, I would prefer Herbert over a Burrow. But um, yeah. So for out of those five guys, Eason to uh, um, Herbert, Burrow, and uh, Love. Where yeah. are the best team fits, overall team fits? Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to I – you want to wrap up our Bengals and then talk about these five quarterbacks? Yeah. Okay, so the one thing is, JC, you want to draft like Herbert to the Bengals, right? How would you proceed in getting the fan base on your side? Would you leak a lot of pro-Herbert stuff? I think I would. I think if you're them, you got to get Herbert to to embrace being a Bengal on his social media somehow. Or I know he doesn't have social, but you got to somehow get a debate going because right now it's like a done deal. So it's almost dumb we're talking about it right now. Yeah, I mean, I would I would have to like start leaking information and like almost like leak stories, you know, um, like uh, you can anonym anonymously leak. Uh, teams are quote unquote falling in love with Herbert's like upside or just, you know, random stuff like that, getting the fans to kind of question it at first. And then also kind of pointing out the, the glaring holes on the roster. Like if we get Joe Burrow or actually, if we get Aaron Rodgers, if we get Drew Brees, we are still not going to be 500. Like we have so many holes on this roster that we need to need to address. And I feel like kind of planting that seed in Bengals fans head, and then also at the same time, pro Herbert, pro Herbert, pro Herbert all the time. Yeah. Then you could be thinking, hey, you know, not only will we get a quarterback in Herbert, but we're also going to get a multitude of picks now that we can start, fill, you know, plugging these holes all over the place. It's a great draft for offensive linemen, um, and it's a great draft for uh, for cornerbacks as well. So those are the two biggest needs, I feel like, on Cincy, even though they've, yeah. you know, acquired some guys. But yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt because I, I do love that quarterback conversation, uh, the, the five now. And I think we should go one by one with this list of, okay. of guys. Okay. So you want to do Burrow first, your favorite fit for Joe Burrow? Uh, yeah, you can go first with Burrow. <laughs> My favorite fit for Joe. <laughs> I do see him in Cincinnati just because of his Ohio background. Um Miami is not even a perfect place for Joe Burrow. It's kind of a weird location for him. A lot of South Beach, a lot of distractions. I, I do like Zach working with Joe Burrow. Um, so Cincy, I think, out of all the possible choices, would be my favorite choice for Burrow. For Burrow, I think I think the Chargers would be the best fit, but that's you know it's not going to happen. I don't think they're going to trade up or whatever. Um, yeah. So I, I would have to say it's the Chargers because I think he could step in. And then just distribute the football to Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. And, you know, the defense is great with the Chargers. And instantly he has to compete with Mahomes and, you know, Drew Locke and all these different guys. But I think the Chargers would make, a, or like from a fit standpoint, uh, L.A. and 
and uh, you know Burrow would make a lot of sense. But I, I'm de- I, I'm, I'm with you. I definitely see him in Cincinnati. I think that's going to be the pick when it's all said and done. How, how about um, Tongo Vailoa? Miami for sure. For it's sure. Miami or the or the Chargers, but I just think the Dolphins have loved him for such a long time. He's kind of like he, he loves. He's from Hawaii, the ocean, Florida. I I think that that's going to definitely happen. I think it's Miami for two also. I, I will say this, though. I do kind of have, like, do you remember last season when, I mean, you know, like, you're a Giant fan. It felt like almost every single mock draft had Haskins to the Giants. And, like, Haskins wanted to be a Giant. And, like, that was kind of, like, everybody knew that, like, halfway through the season. Like, Haskins will be a Giant. And then it turns out not happening. You know, like, he was on the board. The Giants were picking. And then, boom, Daniel Jones. And it kind of shocked everybody. Um I kind of have like the same inkling here. Like everybody's just project, uh, projecting to it in Miami, but I feel like there's a small, small part of me that I feel like Miami wants to move up for Joe. Interesting. Yeah. I think that they do like Burrow, but I doubt that it's going to happen with the yeah. Cincinnati Bengals. I think it would be a heck of a discussion, but here's the difference though, between Haskins and, and Tua I think that, you know, Tua playing in the Orange Bowl in Miami with Stephen Ross there, I I think it's been very known with the tanking for Tua that the Miami Dolphins ownership group really loves the kid. (laughs) So so unlike the Giants and Dwayne Haskins where it was nothing, you didn't know what you were seeing, I think that the Dolphins have big interest in the guy. Yeah, no, that makes makes a lot of sense too. Um, And then also, you know, with his injury concerns and all that stuff, he doesn't have to play immediately. You know, he could sit for a year behind Fitzpatrick and they're, you know, they'll still probably be competitive because they did get a lot better, especially on defense, you know. So yeah. it's not to be like we need to put two in right this second. Let's force him out there, even if he's hurt. Let's go to the interesting one is Justin Herbert. Cincinnati. Is your favorite spot for Herbert? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I- Cincinnati or the Chargers, but I definitely think the Bengals. It's funny. You want Herbert to start immediately. No, I, I think if I'm Cincinnati, I'm, I'm snagging one of these backup quarterback or uh, veteran quarterbacks, and I throw him out there for like four to five weeks, and then Herbert's coming in. I would love Herbert. Oh, man. I mean, this hurts to say because I hate the team, right? But like if he was a Patriot, it would really <laughs> hurt. But I, I also see Tampa Bay would be fantastic with – um. Tom Brady. I think that's a big destination spot for so many quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. Like even if you're Andy Dalton, I think you should look to go to to the box as a backup. Anybody that's not a starter right now, other than Jameis Winston um, or maybe Cam Newton, because Cam only has a, a, you know, a couple of years really with the injury. He wants to start now. The backup should look to go to Tampa, Florida. All these quarterbacks, whether it's Jordan Love and Jacob Eason, because studying under Tom and then Arians, and I think Tampa should look for a quarterback that that could be a future there. Yeah, I agree. So you so you think it's New England and Tampa Bay for for Justin? Yeah, I think Herbert. If you send him to San Diego or L.A., he's just a quiet personality. I'm a little worried if he can turn it around by himself, especially even at Oregon with Taggart and he had some rocky waters there. You know, I'm worried yeah. if he goes to the Chargers with the infrastructure. I don't love that infrastructure. Well, the thing is with the Chargers, an interesting point is they they don't really have a ton of expectate. Like the fan base over there is not like rabid. It's not like the Giants. It's not like the Jets or you know a team that's that's going just. Like the Browns, they're not going absolutely ballistic uh, if the Chargers lose a game or if Phillip Rivers doesn't perform well. Like so, he ha- he doesn't have that that noise, and especially you know for a guy that I don't really think is on social media, um, I don't think it's going to get to him. Like like you know maybe one of these guys that reads every comment. Interesting. He might even be better in the ba- in the big. Uh, that's contrary to popular belief. He might be better in it better in the big market. Like he might he, like that's what Eli Manning kind of was like, you know, or, or Daniel Jones in, in the big time market. But but Herbert, I just yeah, I want to see him go somewhere with a good infrastructure, though. I do. Mm-hmm. OK, but, so but you're right about the Chargers. If he plays and the Chargers fans love him and he has Tyrod there who's a, who's a veteran, like like he helped Baker Mayfield out. 
it would be exciting to see the Chargers get a quarterback, you know, whether it's Cam or, or Justin Herbert. Yeah, and another thing, too, I feel like Tyrod is kind of like the same type of, of guy that Justin is. Like, he's a quiet guy. He's not a vocal leader. He just kind of lets his play do the talking for him. He's a mobile guy, just like Justin. Big arm guy who has, uh, you know, really good deep ball accuracy. I think he'd be a good mentor for Justin. Yeah, and then you start Tyrod out and, and see how the season kind of goes with Shane Steich in there, that offensive coordinator. And I think Herbert is going to be an absolutely fine quarterback, though. I think the top three are are legit. Yeah. So so thoughts on Eason? Best fit. So Jacob Eason. <laughs> the Patriots would be a hilarious fit for Eason. With Eason, you he needs to be selected high enough. If he gets picked in the third round, um, like he's like a Will Greer. Jacob Eason then unfortunately will maybe never even start a game. He might just completely crater out of this league. That's how important this draft is for Eason. You can't send him on an Island right now because I do worry about like, and this isn't just me making this up. I worry about his, his love dedication to the game. You got to get the guy on the tracks immediately, get him, get him in a situation with big expectations. Right, because you don't like that's the last thing you want is like for him to come in with no expectations and then he becomes into a you know, he turns into a Bryce Petty, a Davis Webb, um, you know, one of these guys that's drafted in like the third, fourth round, like you mentioned before, Will Greer, that's a perfect example. Um, like those guys have no expectations at all. You know, nobody yeah. really thought of those guys as, you know, impact guys. It's almost uh, like Chad Kelly, and then he can light it up in a preseason, and then the minute he throws a pick six, people will be like, you don't see what practice is like. Yeah, exactly. So um, I think you got to take him round two. I, I would say he's probably his number one fit. I think Tampa makes a lot of sense, and I think Pittsburgh makes sense too because I feel like he doesn't have to come in and start immediately, and I feel like he's instantly better than Mason, oh, and he's better than Pitt. Pitt. Pitt is fantastic. <laughs> a yeah, replacement Pitt. for Ben being Eason. I think I'm going Eason number four. Um, but on this list, the next guy, Jordan Love, I'm not worried about. He just is such a media hype train, really pushing him. It's pretty amazing. You look at his throws. This guy, if it gets out of the first round, to some will be a huge shock. Um it wouldn't even be like the most absurd thing to see the Dolphins even take Jordan Love because Love, you've seen him go top 10. I think Jordan Love, no matter what, is going to get his chance in this league. Unlike Jacob Eason, where Eason, I don't think, has any media help whatsoever. Yeah, I feel like nobody even knows who Eason is. But everybody knows who. I mean, I've seen some mocks that have Love going sixth overall to the Chargers. Yeah. Yeah. I think that a good situation is kind of that backup role um, gets the sit. I, I think the Colts or the or the Steelers, but now the Colts don't have a first rounder. The Colts can still get him in round two, actually. I think he, Love is going outside the first round. What do you think? I think he's going to go outside of the – well, I look at the Saints late. I think the Saints <laughs> could, be, could be the thing because then he oh, comes in yeah. with Sean Payton – and I think Sean Payton wants to open it up a little bit more with like down the field. Breeze doesn't really provide that, but he gets to sit. You know, I think the Saints oh, make man. a ton of sense. That's a hell of a fit. The Patriots. Yeah, and they're they're those teams are back to back. New England is twenty three, and the Saints have twenty four. Ah, uh, so somewhere, uh, yeah, these quarterbacks well, well, are going to be taken. What, what about the Vikings? Because they have two quarterback destination. Now. Yeah, they have two first rounders now. I, I still think they're rolling with Cousins and with the extension. Okay. I still think they're rolling with Cousins. But, yeah, JC, it's just interesting, this quarterback carousel. You also have Drew Locke, and I hope that Drew Locke remains the top guy in Denver. I don't know if Denver's going to flirt with a Cam Newton or not to have that training camp happen. I don't know what you think about that. Uh, Cam in Denver, I like it. I like. I feel like Cam can still play. Um, obviously not at – not at the MVP caliber level, but I think he, I think he's going to bounce back. I do. I just don't know where, you know? Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be fascinating for sure. So to kind of like wrap out our Bengals talk, I see this Bengals team as being like a, a seven to nine win team next year with, with, with the, the rookie class coming in here. What do you think for Zach Taylor? I'm going to say five wins. 
Oof, because of what offensive line struggles, Burrow. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and uh, they play in a great division, and I just feel like when you, when you can when you look at the Bengals, like things could be looking up, but compared to the other teams around the league, like for example, who's the worst team in the league? Okay, Jacksonville, I'll you, maybe. I'll tell you the worst team in, in in football. I think Carolina. Actually, you look at their pieces are not good. Washington. But you put Washington against Cincinnati, like, you know, it's not like the Bengals are not winning that game by a ton. I think the Bengals can actually maybe, I think the Bengals can beat the Browns. I think that even with Baltimore, I think Baltimore's overrated. I think Baltimore's going to come crashing down. Okay. I mean, so then yeah. you have Pittsburgh. I like Pittsburgh, but at home, Cincinnati's a really tough team to beat. And the Cincinnati Bengals, I mean, Sam Hubbard's going to be a monster next year. I'm just, I'm, and and with Joe Burrow and Zach Taylor, um, I just think that they're going to be like kind of. I guess the Cardinals were five and eleven, but they were they were frisky, you know. So seven and nine isn't terrible. That's pretty average in the AFC to get to yeah. seven and nine. It's important for Zach Taylor. If the guy goes five and eleven, I'm just going to tell you this now: the guy probably will get fired, Zach Taylor. As brutal as that sounds, I don't know. I think Cincinnati's pretty lenient with their with their with their. Uh, they gave Marvin Lewis a pretty long leash. <laughs> yeah, Lua Rinmu. I don't want to see five and eleven though. Central. We need yeah, seven, we I need don't either. Seven or eight wins, man, with this Cincy team. I mean, uh, we need Carl Lawson. You need a pass rush. The second round pick's got to be a huge impact guy. I'm leaning towards Zach Bond. You have Bond and Hubbard on that D-line, man, with Dunlap. DJ Reader in his prime. Geno Atkins, I mean, he is definitely in his prime. The guy's in his 30s now. So it's got to be a reboot. you got to have some excitement, and you got to win some of these games. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's a couple free agent acquisitions and Waynes and Bell and uh, Alexander hopefully turns out to be a beast. So we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, Central. So it, it's been it's been a really fun show, man. I mean, uh, I could go on a little bit longer, but I think we're gonna be doing this like pretty much during the weeks, right? Yeah, for sure, man. We'll do it weekly. We did Cincinnati. We got Washington <laughs> coming up. We'll also maybe review. We did quarterbacks today. We'll maybe review the running back class for this NFL draft next time. Yeah, sounds good. But yo, man, it was a great time, and uh, and thanks a lot for coming in the Rover. Yeah, man. Thanks for the invite.